I'm going to demonstrate how I forge a pretty basic knife. Um, we're going to start with just some 3 16 by 1 inch. Just make a basic small, small knife. Um, the first thing I'm going to do after heating it up is forge a point on here. So that's what you'll see me doing in the next step. And uh, yeah, sweet. I've not used a cold forge in quite a while. I'd like to make that known that there may be some trial and error. still very loose for me. Normally you can do that. I can do that normally in one heat. I'm kind of adjusting to these tools as we go. So. For this part you especially want a lot of heat. You'll get what's called carp's mouth. So I'm going to get that up to a nice bright orange. That's just about where I'm trying to get it. It's not quite as pointy as I'd like it, so I'll make just do one more teeny little heat with this smaller hammer. Uh, I usually like to keep everything pretty tight while I'm doing this, so I like my points to be really pointy, my shoulders to be really sharp. Um, yeah, so give it one more little heat. Just tighten it up a little bit. So now next, um, we've kind of established the blade point enough, and now I'm going to forge in a shoulder where the ricasso is going to be, and like the handle starts. So that'll be uh, next steps. Use the bigger hammer for that. You can see that's kind of establishing uh, where that handle is going to start. 
where the ricasso starts. So uh, now we're going to do what's called a counter bend. Um, I'm going to be bending the blade itself almost like a banana um, because when I go to hammer the bevels in, you know, the cutting edge, that's going to cause the metal on this side to move and the back to stay uh, the same way it is. So it's going to bend as a result from moving this material on the front end. So to get in front of that, we do a counter bend. Uh, and that's what I will do next. Start establishing that blade a little bit. But yeah, so there it is, bent over. Um, and now I'm going to start establishing the bevels, like the cutting edge. Um, uh, this anvil is kind of worn down, so it's going to be a little tough, but I will do my best to show you guys how I do that. <laughs> Normally it's nice to have a tight edge here, so when you're hammering in those bevels, you can already start establishing your plunges, like where your grind lines would be. Um, so that part might be a little difficult, but I'll figure it out. again. Hot. I'm probably going to use a cross beam to try to spread this out a little bit more. I like that to be a little bit wider than it is. Um, this is the cross beam here. Uh, so we will do that next. I'm going to keep working that edge down. Hopefully that's going to help spread this out a little bit. That's the intention. Um, if not, uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it.
right, so that's getting there. Um, you can see the edge is thinning down, um, spreading out. So yeah, we're getting there. Um, let's clean it up further. I'm going to use a smaller hammer to uh, clean up how many divots are kind of getting in there to make sure that my planes are nice and even. Um, get some of this stuff off of the anvil. Just going to clean up that profile some. Okay. Yeah, so we're getting a little bit closer. Get that point, point here. Time where you really want those sharp edges. Yeah, there we go. A little bit cleaner. Okay. All right. I'm going to further establish that. Keep getting that edge thinner. I'm going to do that. Now with a smaller hammer. Kind of chasing that shape down. Um, maybe we'll do one more pass on that. You can see we're also getting a bit of a distal taper this way. Uh, as this starts to bend, if it looks like it's going to go too far back, I'll start hammering on the back side to push it back down. Um, and that helps us get a nice distal taper too. So you have a taper running this way and a taper running this way towards the edge uh, for stabbing and cutting stuff. Cool. Yeah, it's starting to look kind of like a knife, right? hard to see after working on that full forge like that. All right, yeah, so it's pretty centered. Um, that's where you want it. Straight and centered. 
So uh, yeah, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm probably gonna establish where that, I'm gonna basically be cleaning out the profile. I'm gonna establish where the blade starts and the ricasso ends uh, using the edge of this handville and my hammer obviously. And then, uh, and then we'll start working on the handle and this will be a knife. Or, er, well, the shape of a knife. <laughs> Knives need to be heat treated, they have to be ground. You really, I think, you know, finish work is important on blades. Um, and that all takes place after this part. And, uh, this is really an important part of the process, but definitely not the fun to watch part of the process. So that'll establish kind of where that cutting area starts. Gives you a nice clean, clean transition. Um, let me give a, a couple more hits with this slider hammer to just, you want your planes to be nice and even, especially as I mentioned, these, these are heat treated. Um, if you have a bunch of divots and wavy stuff in there from a bigger, uh, more round faced hammer, when you go to harden this and you quench it, it's just gonna wanna curve all over the place. You want everything to be nice and straight um, nice and even, uh, yeah, saves problems down the line, makes a nicer knife. Yeah, so we're gonna go for that, this stage. So to be, to be honest, actually, I, sh I should not still be hitting this. It should be hotter than this. Uh, but again, I'm just kind of getting used to these tools and <laughs> using a cold forge again. Uh, so I'm making a couple mistakes. But yeah, so that's, that's the basic shape of it. Sometimes I'll make this edge a little bit thinner at this stage, um, just so it's less grinding later. Um, but you know, this is close enough, I think, for a demo for just kind of showing you guys how I do this and not making you really bored. So, <laughs> so I will move on to the next step. But, yeah, that's the basics of how the blade part is forged. And now I'm gonna start roughing out where the handle's gonna go. We're gonna hot cut this from the bar and finish it out, hopefully. So let's, let's do that. Thinning that down some, you know, um, uh, so that I kind of can see what I'm working with. This is the part where I'm probably gonna, I am going to hot cut this from the bar now. Um, 
yeah, and then we're gonna start establishing the handle. It's gonna look like I don't have enough material when I cut it, but I'm going to do distal tapers through the handle too, so that that way, like all that weight is really mostly focused right here on the Ricasso, so the knife feels really light, really easy to hold, um, and uh, it looks really cool when you do that also. So there's that advantage too. Um, yeah, sweet, let's do it. Well, let's find the hot stuff first. I also should probably mention, I didn't notice when I started doing this, this anvil is backwards. You normally want the horn on your left side, and I didn't turn it around. No harm, no foul. You know. <laughs> That's where we're at with that. You always want to take this out after you use it so you don't chop your fingers off. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so now we're going to try to make sure that this is nice and proportionate to the blade. Again, getting a nice distal taper in there. Um, yeah, that'll be that. Break out some tongs. Clean this anvil off a little bit. We'll get started on this next one.
starting to taper that down a little bit. Uh, and we'll put that back in the fire. Just adding like a little ergonomic element in there because um, it's always comfy and fun. So establishing that profile, working down that taper, um, yeah. getting closer to what I wanted. Uh, cool. Paper, keeping the shape. And a little broken there, we'll fix that as we go. and just making sure it's flat before I throw it back in the fire.
getting closer. Thing that is really cool about a cold forge as opposed to a propane forge is you can just kind of heat up smaller spots of your piece um, which I'm hoping to do to correct I want that back to be a little bit straighter and it's just crooked on this back on the very butt end of the knife so I'm hoping I can just heat that up and fix it without messing anything else up yeah Okay. All right. I'm going to dial in that taper just a little bit more and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Closer. All right. Closer. It's getting there. I'm gonna switch to my lighter hammer. This is two pound. Great, so now I'm gonna use the smaller hammer to just clean up these planes a little bit. We'll go back to uh, kind of finishing out the blade. making sure that that's clean, clean faces. I'm gonna go back with the flatter once this is all done and make sure it's really smooth, but, but that'll do for now. Cool. And now we're just gonna do the same thing with the blade, just make sure everything's where we want it. Um, it's got a little bit of a whoop to it. So I'm gonna go back in and get rid of that. And, uh, just keep those planes nice and clean.
a little bit better. Okay. So, so that's roughly like what we're working with. I'm gonna get a flatter and go back over it um, and make sure all those planes are nice and smooth. Um, yeah, so we'll do that now. Get out another big hammer and my flatter. Actually, uh, do you mind if I grab one of you guys' flatters? Sure, thanks. Especially you always want to watch your tip during this part. Um, you do not want to burn up carbon steel, any steel, but especially carbon steel. Uh, so be especially careful. Just get a nice even heat on that blade. Broken back. 
which is what we call it's one way to describe when there's a little bit of a bump there um, I'll try to chase that down real quick um, if I can't you know no big deal As much as I want these demos to be informative, I also don't want them to be super boring, and I don't, <laughs> I don't necessarily want to waste your time with you just watching me chase down one little bump, but when I'm alone, that is as nerdy as I like to get. I like to be everything pre pretty close to shape when I'm done. Um, uh, and I encourage people to do the same. You know, like when you start using fancier steels like Damascus or something, um, you really don't want to waste any of that material. Um, so it's good practice, and it's just cooler to know that you can like get everything pretty close to perfect with just your hammer. That's a that's a nice feeling. That's a little bit better. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to use the wooden mallet to true it up and we will be finished. So I use the wooden mallet for this stage because like, all, you know, all my hammer work's done. Um, uh, normally even after truing something up like that, I do another pass of the flatter just, just to be sure everything's nice and flat, but you know, it, it's, it's very close. Um, and when you use that wooden mallet, you aren't adding any extra divots to the blade. You're just applying basically pressure to uh, straighten it out, you know. I want this knife to be nice and straight, so. And they got big old wooden mallets here at Touchdown. It's very satisfying. <laughs> so you just do draws like that while it cools to black. Great. Having trouble seeing because of that coal forge. <laughs> yeah, so you can always further correct it later. Um, it's it's close. Uh, we just want to just get all the big wobbles out of there, so that's why I use the wood mallet and the flatter at the end. Um, but yeah, this is this is not a bad place to stop. Um, Looks like a knife, <laughs> I think. Uh, and as mentioned, like, you know, the next stage in this would be like, I would grind into it to make sure I liked all my hammer work and the profile and all my tapers are nice and clean. Um, handle was comfortable and ergonomic. Um, I'd make corrections as necessary and then you would normalize to uh, get a nice even grain structure and then harden the blade by heating it to critical and quenching it in uh, oil, um, depending on the knife. It, um, carbon steel's usually oil, so uh, yeah, and then you would temper it and grind it and it'd be a knife. Um, add a wooden handle if you want, uh, but that's how it starts, right here at the forge, uh, anvil, and hammer. My name is McKenna Hendrickson. I'm currently at Touchstone Center for Crafts as the intern in the Blacksmithing Studio for the second summer in a row. And today I'm going to be talking a little bit about twists. Check out this little set of samples that we have in the studio. These are twisted bars that we keep around as examples of different types of styles and techniques. As you can see, most of the twists are done with square bars and today I'm going to talk a little bit more about the underrepresented round bar. Um, this is a twist done in round pipe. This twist was made by flattening a round bar and then twisting it. But today I'm going to demonstrate how to make a U-twist which is personally one of my very favorites. We're going to begin with a round bar like this. We're gonna fold it in half. We're gonna smush the little end there and then we're gonna make it do the splits and it will end up as a U-twist. So I'm 
I'm gonna start with my bar here. It's a little bit longer than the one on the table. I'm gonna get it into our cold forge here and get it heating up. After we demonstrate that one, I'll do a brief demonstration of this classic twist done in a square bar. This is a 360 degree twist. It's a very quick and very dramatic way of manipulating the metal. While that heats up, we'll talk a little bit about the different sizes and different applications of the U-twist. Down here, some of these items will be in the gallery uh, featured in our open house, like these necklaces and earrings. This is a good example to show the difference in scale that is possible with this twist and many other things. You have an eighth inch bar here that then turns into U-twists on these earrings. Below the earrings, there are some handles in progress. These will get holes tapped in the back of them and they can become drawer poles or handles for cabinets, etc. Okay, our metal is hot. I like to use the Pritchell hole for bending this type of thing sometimes, um, just to give it a good little start. And that way I can continue and just pull it towards me and bend it in half. I'm trying to keep it from crossing over itself too much here. Keep it even and Gently flatten the end there. Didn't take much. Now because it's cooled off enough, I'm going to heat this part up again and then we'll just open it right up. So when you're looking at a U-twist, depending on which way you pull the little legs will determine the position of your twist. So this twist began like this with this leg down and it was pulled underneath. Right. For this, I like to use another pair of tongs because I can establish where the force is being placed and I'm putting it equidistant from the center and just pulling it apart. So now I'm gonna straighten up the little legs here. Just give them some gentle adjustments here. Kind of trim them up a little bit without um, marring the surface of my U. I'm just gonna brush this off. looking pretty good, pretty even. I'll be right back and quench this sucker. Okay. One end of that guy is still pretty hot, but there you can see the U-twist. If you look in here, you can see that it was opened with the proper heat. There's been no cracking. So that's a happy little twist. So now, just for fun, I'll demonstrate possibly the most popular twist in blacksmithing. Just your standard square bar 360 degree twist. To accomplish this, I'm going to be using a twisting wrench, which is just a wrench that has been modified with an additional bar. Um, so you can grasp the metal in it and spin it as you please. They come in many different sizes, depending on the type of stock that you're gonna be twisting. We're gonna use a little boy today because all we're using is this quarter inch square stock. I'm going to be securing one end of the bar in our post vise here and then using the twisting wrench 
Do you give it a little spin? heat there. It doesn't have to be super duper hot to do this. So here we go. 360 degrees. I'm just going to kind of check to see how straight or true my bar is. It's looking pretty good. Grab that guy out of the vise. Give it a quick brush. And there you have it. Lickety split, 360 degree square twist. Great, thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of the open house. Cool, so uh, I'm gonna forge a leaf from this 3A square bar. Um, uh, first step is just forging a point on here. Uh, so that will be what we do next. Get it really hot and start hitting it. So, got a little bit of a point on there. Um, and now next step, we're gonna force the shoulder over here where the stem begins on the leaf. So that'll be next. get it hot and clean that up so yeah I just want that joint nice and even and mine got a little bit off so I'm gonna get it hot and try to fix it Now I'm going to start spreading this out to make the actual leaf. Um, that'll be next.
going to get it hot and keep keep doing that. Using the cross bean to flare it a little bit um, so it widens. Now I'm going to use the flat face of the hammer to start smoothing this out a little bit and uh, we'll go from there. thinner than that. This side's, this side's still got some meat on it. Normally I like to keep everything really even, but I actually kind of like how this one's getting kind of funky. That's cool. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to leave it. Um, yeah, and then uh, now I'm going to use uh, the smaller cross to uh, texture the leaf actually. Um, yeah, so we'll do that next. It to look kind of cool. Give it some flavor. Okay. Try to clean up this stem a little bit and then I'm going to hot cut it from the bar. cut and cut this off of this bar here.
separate from the bar. tail out of this mass here that I left. Okay. Again and keep doing the same thing. Get it hot. Got overzealous. And impatient. Uh oh, burn that tip up a little bit. That was a no no we were watching for. It. Maybe we can save it. Oh, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Just a little bit. start forging this square into an octagon so we can start rounding it after this all right I'm gonna use the smaller hammer for that this one is two pounds it's like a flatter face uh, for more even surfaces really just work on this tip, get it really uh, pointy. So I'm gonna make a scroll out of it and I want it to look cool. So I'm gonna go pointier.
split, so let me just call that good enough. All right, now we're gonna start forging the scroll. I'm gonna start this with my hammer, the small hammer. Um, under normal circumstances, like, you know, you practice until you can get those scrolls really just with your hammer. This is a demo. I will almost certainly make a mistake and uh, have to clean it up with these uh, scrolling tongs uh, that Anna Coppola, who teaches here, actually made for me. Here's your maker's mark. They are awesome. up a little bit. I'm cheating a little bit, but what are you going to do? All right, so now um, we're going to try to get that scroll to wrap back around onto the face of the leaf after Actually, I dish this leaf and give it some texture uh, using this 2x4 I got here that I made uh, many other leaves in. So yeah, we'll do that next. shape to it, a little bit of life to it, pops those textures, cool. Now we're going to make the uh, aforementioned loop so it has some way to hold on to your keys or wherever you decide to put this guy. We need this, we'll leave those out too. All right. tip to be hot, just the stem. Just one more little. This way I won't mess up my work as I try to wrap it. starting to get somewhere. Okay. Hopefully this will be a little bit easier to heat the stem now. so we don't make any mistakes or crack anything.
probably use the tongs to make that a little bit cleaner. It's still kind of ugly. <laughs> Want it to be a little more elegant than that. Get it kind of on the same plane so I can see what I'm working with. Yeah, so that's getting a little bit closer. That's a little bit more flowing. Pretty. Do a little bit more fussing. I don't want to waste too much of your time. Get it hot and wooden mallet it one more time. good I think cool so yeah so that's basically how I forged that style leaf a um, couple of notes uh, for those of you who do want to try this at home uh, the first leaf I forged uh, in an attempt to correct the uh, the joint here I caused a cold shut I didn't want to waste time from the demo so I tried to forge ahead with it and this was a result this is why cold shuts are bad um, I don't get them too much anymore, but I see those really, really, really commonly for people when they first started forging leaves. So, not an uncommon problem. Definitely want to keep an eye on that. This one I left a little bit thicker. The leaf, I was, I kept like I like, more centered, um, and everything worked out a little bit better, <laughs> of course. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, come take a class when, when we do that.